Paul says, I know both how to be abased and I know how to bound. Everywhere in all things I have learned both to be hungry and to be full and to abound and to suffer need. But he said, I've learned in whatsoever state I am. Therewith to be content. How could he say that? How could he say I'm satisfied with whatever my lot? Just like it is well with my soul. That the songwriter lost his three girls down in, the, down in that dark, cold ocean on their way to London, and only his wife was saved. And he writes that part of that verse. Whatever my lot. Thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. Why? Because he knew God loved him. He was secure in God's love. Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril. You know, Christian people are killed in tornadoes. Christian people are killed in hurricanes. Christian people are killed in floods. Christian people are killed in earthquakes. All kinds of people. Christian people are killed with violent acts. Columbine. I can't remember if there were some Christians that were shot and killed in that theater by that fool who opened fire in a movie theater. We all go through, we, and we, we're not exempt from perils. It rains upon the just and the unjust. So because that happens, do we say, well, may, well, maybe God forgot about me. Maybe God didn't love me. No, no, not at all. A thousand times no. He always loves us. No matter what we're going through. Never doubt His love. Sword. What would that relate to? War. We could go to war in this country. We could have a war on our soil. They got close, 9 11, and that's close enough, hopefully. But nothing says that we may not have an all out and out assault on our American soil, and American Christian people may die. What if that happens? Does that mean God doesn't love us as Americans? No, not at all. Verse 36 says, As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Christian people die every day. Things happen to Christian people all across this world. We're not, we're not because we're American, we are not exempt from the problems of this world. I think sometimes we think we are. Just because we're an American. <laughs> well, <laughs> we don't have a corner on, on God's love, folks. But because something happens that we don't think is just, because something happens that we are confused with, and we don't think God, God, God should allow it, that doesn't mean He doesn't love us. All things work together for good to them that love God. And in order to love God, you must understand your position in Christ and who He is and what He has done for you. Verse 37 says, Nay, in all these things, what? Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him that, what? Loved us. He shows us He loves us. In those times, He shows us He loves us. And we can overcome. A Christian can overcome any of those things because God assures us of His love. And then Paul writes, I love this, for I am persuaded. Why is he persuaded? The two words before, or the, or, or the four words before, him that loved us. I am persuaded because he loves me that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, 
nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what he's saying is I know that there's nothing in this world that will ever change God's mind about me. Hallelujah! <laughs> nothing that the devil could throw at me. Or nothing that the devil could throw at you. Nothing that this world could throw at you. Principalities or powers. Hey, by the way, whether you were encouraged or discouraged last week by the RNC, or whether you are encouraged or discouraged by the DNC, it doesn't matter. Because no matter what happens on November 6th, God still is on the throne, and God still loves us. He loves me, and He loves you. And no matter what happens, no matter if this country goes to hell in a handbasket, and it very well could, God will always reveal His love to you and to me. And thank God. Whether we're on the top side or we're on the bottom, it doesn't matter what position. If we're on our back, or if we're up on the mountaintop, it doesn't matter. Because He loves us. The security of His love. Father, thank You that You love us. It's no wonder that Paul made the statement, the love of Christ constraineth us. That's why we should be motivated to serve you. Because of all that you have shown. Far more than just what we've read in these, this scripture passage tonight. You love us more than we will ever understand. More than we can ever grasp. Help us to feel secure in that love tonight. If we've struggled with the idea, does God really love me? Help us tonight to get that button down. Help us to get it settled tonight. I am so glad that my Father in Heaven tells of His love in the book He has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Maybe tonight there's some that need you just to grab them and hold them tonight. Maybe there's some that just need a little assurance tonight of your love. Spiritually, let them climb up in your lap and whisper in their ear, You're loved. I love you. And may they tonight whisper back, God, I love you too. Let's stand. I'm going to ask